Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another episode of Capsule RX Podcast. So today's episode should be short, unless I go on a rant, <laughs> which I typically do. And I was really thinking about what should I talk about today. I was just in Houston. I haven't had a chance to finish editing all the content. I think I have like an hour and a half to maybe two hours of content um, with Pill Talk Podcast. The host and owner of that is Dr. Bartu Wilson. Shout out to him uh, for being an incredible host and uh, welcome me uh, to Houston and uh, being willing to create some content that we'll be able to put on both of our pages and, and definitely try to cross pollinate our audience a little bit. And super, super, super excited. I'm hoping next week next week if not in two weeks that'll probably be the episode or it might be extended because we made so much content that uh i could see us go ahead and kind of draw that out over a couple couple weeks but i was really thinking about different things to talk about today one of them being maybe we could talk about you know artificial intelligence uh talk more about job searches different things I'm, i'm trying to keep it relevant to everything that's going on but I think today I'm going to talk about something um, that was inspired from a conversation I had not too long ago with multiple different people about using how to really align your career with your personal goals. I think that's the forgotten aspect when it comes to whatever you're doing, whether it's pharmacy, whether it's something else in healthcare, whether it's something outside of healthcare. It doesn't really make a difference, but if you ask me what's important, it's about making sure the career goal will align with the personal goal. And so one of the things that I personally like to do, um, when it comes to things like this is to actually start with the personal goal first. I believe a lot of people will start with the career goal, right? My career goal is I want to be a pharmacist. So they go through pharmacy school. Uh, Well, first they'll go through undergrad. They'll get accepted into a college, go through undergrad, get into graduate school, go through that. As they're in grad school, maybe they want to be a hospital or clinical pharmacist, right? So then they say, I will go ahead and apply for residency and I will go through residency and I'll go do a PGY-1. And then during the PGY-2, they decide they want to be a specific type of pharmacist. And then they say, you know what, I'm going to go do a PGY-2 and go become this specific type of pharmacist. Meanwhile, those four years of undergrad the four years of graduate school, the one year of a PGY-1, and then the second year of a PGY-2, so a total of 10 years we're looking at, you could have possibly put your personal career goals on the back burner. And so you might wonder, why does that matter? That matters because you need to be in alignment with your personal and career goals because when you're not aligned with both that is when you really get frustrated that is when you don't like your job that is when you don't like your life at home that is when you stop appreciating the blessings that are coming into your life now a lot of us are following or are part of that rat race i recently just had a conversation with somebody about this in houston a lot of us are in that rat race a lot of us are chasing things that only benefit one side. If everything is only about the career goals, then what about you? What about you as the person? Because then you're benefiting the company. You could be the number one corporate employee. Everything's going great. But are you happy at home? Do you have a family? Do you talk to your parents? If you have kids, do your kids love you? Do they want to spend time with you? Is your spouse or your partner 
frustrated with you because you're not spending quality time with them. And if that's important to you, then that needs to be part of your career goals. I understand most of the time that you'll spend in your life will probably be at work. So you should enjoy what you do at work. But you should also enjoy your personal life. Because that's what's going to make you come to work the next day excited. You know, it's like a breath of fresh air. You won't need to go on vacation all the time. You'll be excited to work. You'll be excited to be around the people there. Whether it's pharmacy or not pharmacy. I don't know about you guys, but when I was a student on rotation, I could tell the people who truly loved what they do. But not only that, they had a profession or a career that also aligned with their personal goals because they were happy at work and when they left they were happy at home and that's something that I want all of us to think about is not necessarily focusing on the happiness because I want that to be a byproduct of us making the right decision because sometimes you're gonna have to suffer because residency is not fun. <laughs> it's not peaches and roses. It's not, uh, it's not a year full of happiness. I'll say that much. Anybody that goes through it or anybody that's currently going through that will tell you. But once you're done with residency, once you're done with, with some, some suffering, some sacrifice that you have to make, if that aligns with your career and personal goals, then you'll be extremely happy then you'll be so much more appreciative. Coming on the other side of residency, I am way more appreciative of I am of residency than when I was in it, all right? And that's because one of the reasons why I did residency, even though going through it, it wasn't fun, was because it aligned with my personal goals. My One of my biggest personal goals was that I wanted to be a part of pharmacy that would allow me to have a flexible career. I like being flexible, meaning I could, if I don't want to do, so I did an ambulatory care based residency. I'll start off with that. So if I don't want to do ambulatory care anymore, would I still be trained well enough to maybe work clinical? So maybe if I want to switch things up in five years and I want to leave the state of Florida and go to North Carolina or go to Ohio or some random state, I could do that. And a limiting factor wouldn't be the job because I am more than qualified to work different pharmacy positions. So I can work inpatient. I could be a staffing pharmacist. I could be an AMCARE pharmacist. I can work within different ambulatory care chronic disease states, you know, whether it's an anticoagulant clinic, a diabetes clinic, different things like that. So having that flexibility, so that way it's not a limiting factor to me with what I want to do with my personal life because one of the things I like to do is travel. So through traveling, you might find a place that you would like to live or move to or spend some time there. And if that were so to be, I need to have a position that allows me to be flexible. Because if not, let's just say I am a infectious disease pharmacist. And maybe that in that area, all those positions are filled. So am I going to now kind of switch to something else? Will I want to do that? Probably not. If I specialized in that one thing and those opportunities aren't there, now I kind of have to stick to cities or areas where that specialized thing that I have, I'm limited to that because that's all I know or that's like my forte, that's my strength. So my CV reflects me as this person. And so the jobs I will be searching for, the jobs that I will be most qualified for will be jobs that pertain to that. So I really want you all to think. Take some time in pharmacy school. Think about, or even if you're a pharmacist, think about your personal goals. Think about, is it important for me to start a family early as soon as I get out of pharmacy school? Because if that's, if that's the case, then maybe you want to consider doing something that allows you to do that. Maybe you want to pick a career option that's a little bit more job stable for you, right? If you want to, let's say you want to be a part of a company or you're going to be there your whole life, look at these companies that have low firing rates, that people have been there for a long period of time when you're on rotations. Speak with the pharmacist. See how long they've been there. Oh, wow, you've been here ever since you graduated. You've been here this whole time. 
Oh, so as this person, so as this person. Okay, so this company has a bit of a track record for keeping somebody there for a long period of time. Some places you'll see when it comes to residents, they want their residents to go somewhere else. It's not that they don't want them there. They might just push them to other places because they want them to kind of instill the knowledge and represent the brand at different locations. And so let's say maybe you did your residency in Orlando and there was no position for you in Orlando, but maybe you go to Texas, Dallas, Texas, and you get a position there. And now you're kind of spreading the brand of the residency. You know, you're such a great pharmacist there. They speak highly of you and you can attribute it back to this residency. So everybody kind of has a different agenda, but those are things I want you all to think about is your personal goals. What matters? Family time. And it it doesn't always have to be the most uh, considerate thing. You know, (laughs) it doesn't have to be family. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, marriage or your partner. It could be a selfish thing. For me, I like to travel. I want to make sure I have a job where I'm able to travel And when I'm gone, it's not mayhem, (laughs) you know, where some people, maybe if you're running a store or more responsibility falls on you and you leave and you come back and somebody is filling in your shoes and things aren't going well, now you have twice as much work you have to do. Maybe you have to stay late to do work off the clock. That's not what I want to do. That's not what I want to be a part of. I want to be able to leave and know, hey, this system that we have built is going to keep on flourishing. You know, so those are different things you need to think about is what are your personal goals and how can they align with your career goals? So let's say, for example, let's go ahead. We're doing this live. I'm probably not going to edit this. So let's go ahead and do myself right now. So career goals for me. All right. I'm subject. I'm subject A. So one of my career goals was Amcare or some type of TOC. So I'm going to write that down, Amcare TOC. And of course, these things can change, right? When I was in pharmacy school, I was thinking maybe I'd be like a compound pharmacist or maybe do retail or independent. I don't know. And then once I got into my fourth year rotations, I was like, okay, I think I might want to do... Actually, no. When I did my hippie, I was thinking about doing clinical. And then... Once I went on rotations, I was like, actually, I really love Amcare and TLC. And they're like, that's that's my niche. That's what I'm into. Um, and then I also really found a love for pharmacogenomics. So we can write down PGX, pharmacogenomics. So pharmacogenomics, Amcare, TOC, those were like the main things that I was into when it came to pharmacy school. And then once I started working as a pharmacist, I really enjoyed staffing. You know, I, I feel like when, you, when you're a central pharmacist, When you're in that position, especially one um, where I work, where the communication is very key, you know, you're really, you feel like an integral part of the team when you're in that position. And to me, you kind of feel like the quarterback because you're the one who's making sure all the meds are getting to the right locations. You're the ones who are helping triage anything that the nurses need, the doctors need, because they'll call sometimes and help triage anything that the, um, the floor pharmacist, the clinical pharmacist might possibly need. So you're really an integral part of the team. Some people may not view it that way, but I feel like it's it's more sport-like because I have my techs here, you're supervising techs, you're in communication with them, you're in communication with your fellow um, staffing pharmacists if you have more than one. And so you have that, then you also have the communication with the floor pharmacist. So I really enjoy that role because there's so much communication and so much brotherhood going on there. Some people may not. <laughs> Some people like to to do more of a loner thing or different things. I feel like, you know, in the, in the clinical realm, depending on how your clinical environment can be, it can be kind of you're off to yourself, kind of working on things. You might have some rounds here and there um, and opportunities to communicate with other people, but it's not as constant communication as it is staffing. And so that's something that I also enjoyed. So I was like, all right, I wouldn't mind being a staff pharmacist. That's okay. So we wrote down Amcare, TOC, PGX, staff staff pharmacist. Another thing I wanted was um, something flexible. I believe I would probably get bored doing the same thing every day. So something flexible where I can kind of switch things up. Um, Something that I was looking at. So flexible as well, I I just wrote down. 
with career goals. Um, opportunity for growth. So that was something that was big for me. And I think a lot of times people look at opportunity as it has to be pay scale. For me, it wasn't necessarily, oh, an opportunity to you know make a lot more money or this, that. Like As long as they're making typical job market increases with inflation to match inflation, I'm comfortable with that. But for this opportunity, or for this, what I mean is opportunity for growth doesn't have to be position, right? Doesn't have to be a title, but an opportunity to maybe expand pharmacy, an opportunity to be a part of a, um, let's see, different groups, right? Um, be a part of different educational things that are going on to maybe educate the hospitalists or intensivists, the nursing staff. So opportunities to step into different roles outside of the typical um, pharmacist role that you think of as a pharmacy student. So an opportunity for growth. That was another thing. And I don't know about y'all, but I don't really like doing job interviews. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. It's not bad. You know, I I have to do what you have to do, you know, but if you ask me, I look at my parents, they had the same job their whole life. I don't mind that. I wouldn't mind being with one company my whole life. So that's something else that was important to me. So a company that I can be at my whole life. So a company that has a track record of keeping people and a company that has multiple locations. Right. So when you think of retail pharmacies, you're thinking of, let's say, um, CVS, Walmart, Publix, all these retail pharmacies, they have multiple locations, right, all throughout the United States. So that gives me an opportunity to not be localized to one place. So that's something that that I find valuable is um, the opportunity to be at a is the job stability, but also. Um, having various locations. So I'm going to go ahead and write down job stability and various locations. So those are some of the things that I was looking at when I was applying for residencies. Um, one of the reasons why I was interested in the VAs, interested in large hospital organizations, um, because they would have multiple throughout the state or multiple throughout the United States. And so that's something that was viable to me. Also, Amcare, TOC, PGX, staff pharmacists, uh, the ability to be flexible with your schedule a little bit or flexible with the work that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Opportunity for growth, job stability, and various locations. So those are some of the career goals that I have. Um, of course, there's other ones where like getting a teaching certificate was important to me. So I'd look for a residency that had that. Um, the opportunity to teach, you know, would this location be opposed to me maybe in the future being able to be a lab lecturer um, and teach courses at different schools because that's would like to get into academia a little bit. So, and that's one of the reasons why or how the podcast came about, right? Um, if you tune in on Tuesdays on Instagram, um, and also, uh, I think, well, main, it's mainly on Instagram. If you tune in on Instagram for Teach Back Tuesdays, um, we're definitely posting stuff and Test Your Knowledge Thursdays, we're, we're posting questions on there. Test Your Knowledge Thursdays, we, we've been posting on, uh, YouTube as well on our YouTube shorts at new underscore caps rx podcast and same thing with uh tiktok as well so you'll find that there so be able to get into academia that's like another career goal i could um you could put you know the ability to do something where it's you know you want to get certified or different things like that could be that could be part of your career goals so will this place that you're working at give you the hours you need if you want to be certified so for example like the diabetes um educator certification. I don't remember all the letters. <laughs> it's a lot of letters in the title. But will you be at a place that allows you to work with enough diabetes or diabetic patients to where you can have those qualified hours in order to go sit for that certification, to take the exam to be certified? So those are some things that you can look at and think about when it comes to your career goals, right? What certifications would you want? What long-term goals do you have? Short-term when I think of short term, I think of less than three years. Or actually, I'll say this. When I think of short term, it, it depends on what, but I would say less than three years. Midterm, mid midterm goals are usually three to five for me or three to seven. And then seven to 10 
it's probably more of like a long term goal for me. So that's something um, I kind of live by. You can do things different. Some people short term might be less than a year. Mid is like one to five, and then five to ten is long. Everybody's different. But go ahead and write down your career goals. So I kind of shared some of mine, and you can have something similar. And I mentioned, of course, certifications, academia, different things like that. Uh, if you want to be in ad- administration, right? You want to be in a leadership, a manager, managerial role or position. Write that down. It's your career. You do what you want, right? So go ahead and write them down. Use this as a guide. And now we're going to transition to personal goals. Okay. Personal goals. So for my personal goals, some of the things that I cared about was, one, a flexible schedule. Because I have a lot of different things going on in my life. So I would like something that allows for a bit of a flexible schedule. Um, having a podcast, having other side uh, business interests, and, you know, a lot, lot of different life things. So having a flexible schedule to where, okay, I'm not locked into only working Monday through Friday, where... Let's say, for example, an ambulatory care clinic. You know you can only work Monday through Friday. So if I need to take a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday off, I have to use PDO. Now, if I'm working at a hospital, that's 24-7, open Monday through um, Monday through Sunday, however you want to do it, Sunday through Saturday. So if I need a couple days off during the week, that's cool because I can still work the other five days during the week and I can handle the business I need to handle on those days and not have to dive into my PDO. So that was something that was important to me. So having a flexible schedule. And that might be something that's important to you, so that's why I wanted to share that. Excuse me. Another thing would be, and it doesn't even have to be for the flexible schedule, just to be clear, it doesn't even have to be uh, something at for business. It could just be for your own leisure, for travel and things like that, you know? Maybe you find it's best for you to travel or it's cheapest for you to travel on Wednesdays and Thursdays and you have that type of rapport with the scheduler. So you can try to set things up to where usually Wednesdays and Thursdays you're off, right? Instead of traveling on the weekend because everybody else is traveling on the weekend and that's when the flights are the highest, <laughs> okay? That's when they're most expensive. But if you travel middle of the week, it's a little bit different, right? So that's something you can think about. But that was actually, I'll I'll throw that in next. One of my personal goals is to travel more. But um, as you can tell with with the Finance Friday content and different things like that, I like to make sure the money uh, is right. It's not too expensive. It's not out of pocket. And sometimes I find better deals during the week. So I might be gone during the week. And that's what's best for me. So that's what's most affordable. Uh, sometimes if I have friends or family I'm visiting, maybe it's also easier for their schedule for me to come during the week. You never know. So that's something that I wanted to include is traveling. So that's one of my personal goals is travel and, um, a flexible schedule. Another one, um, I'll be honest is pay. So I wanted to be a part of a company that pays, doesn't have to pay the most, it doesn't have to pay the highest. But I would say pays in the ballpark that a pharmacist should make. So one that's keeping up with the average or median pay of a typical pharmacist. Now, some places I interviewed with, uh, they were on the lower scale. Hmm. That does not align with my personal goals. Now, the job could be good. All these things, you get all this benefit in healthcare. But that's one of my personal goals. And if it wasn't right and I took that job, I'd probably be upset or want to leave after a couple months because I know I could probably get paid more somewhere else, which I did. So that's something that, um, well, I I didn't take the job, but I did end up getting paid more somewhere else. So that's where it mattered to me was pay. doesn't have to be the highest, but it certainly cannot be the lowest. I'll be honest about that. So that was something else that mattered to me. Um, let's see. Another personal goal of mine. Doing this on the fly here, so I'm putting myself on the spot. Usually I put other people on the spot. Flexible schedule 
definitely the ability to travel more, pay. Another personal goal, and, and this one is hard to tell. This is where it's valuable to have an in-person interview and have an in-person experience, but I wanted to be part of what we call a family, right? A pharmacy family. I want to feel inclusive. I want to feel that the people around me have my best interest, not only pharmacy-wise, but also personal-wise. Because when you're at work, I said this before, you're going to spend majority of your life at work. 40 hours a week. You're always here, probably doing some time off the clock, all these different activities. You're going to spend a lot of your life at work. So I want to make sure that the people I'm with are people that I enjoy being around. And I also want to make sure that these people have the best interest for me because, hey, I'm now going from this tax bracket to this tax bracket. Hey, do you know a, a good accountant? I don't want to keep using... uh. What is it like Quicken um, TurboTax? There we go. TurboTax, H&R Block. You know, uh, can you connect me to an accountant? That's that networking, right? Can you help me find somebody to, you know, do you know anybody that's that's in the real estate business that can help me find a house, you know, to move into if that's something I'm looking for, right? So all these different things where these people have been working in the field for a long time and could have a lot of relationships with different people within the city. And now they're connecting you with people where it's outside of pharmacy. It's that personal interest. They want to see you successful. They want to see you succeed. So I want to be around people where it's not, oh, it's all about me. It's not selfish. It's not, they, I feel like DJ Khaled, they don't want to see you win. You know, uh, it's none of that, none of that type of behavior. It's all what's best for you. And, and they genuinely care about you and they want you to be successful. So another thing that was big for me personal interest wise was a farmly. Okay. So farmly pay, uh, the ability to travel, have a bit of a flexible schedule. And let's see if I can think of something else. Off the top of my head, I can't think of anything else, but well, for me, for me, I can't think of anything else, but some things that I've talked to people and I know that that's valuable or important to them, I'll go ahead and list. So that way, if you're listening, uh, if you want to create your own list, these are things that you can write down to see for your personal goals, if this suits you. So some people want a regular schedule because if you know for a fact that you're going to be working Monday through Friday from 8 to 4.30, you can always plan the rest of your week and your life around that doctor's appointments. Uh, different things. You can always set things up, right? Some people have, some people need that type of structure. Me, I need structure, but I also like flexibility. So I'm, I'm a bit in between there. Um, there's some moments where it's like, in the beginning, I wanted more of a flexible schedule. Now I think I might want more of a structured schedule. Uh, and that's why I said things can change, right? But you want to be at a place where if they're flexible with you as well when it comes to changes with your personal goals and different things like that. But maybe you want more of a strict schedule, right? More of a rigid schedule. That's what's best for you. Best for you, your family, your friends, whatever the case may be. Another thing that you might want is, personal-wise, is to have time to spend with your family, right? That could be a big thing. So maybe if you have children, if you have um, different events you want to attend to, maybe it's a nephew or niece. Okay, if you know those are in the evenings, then maybe you want to make sure you have a position where you're only going to be working in the mornings. Or, or, or you'll get out in the early evening, early afternoon. So different things like that. Maybe you're searching for something that's overnight, you know? So you kind of want to have things that kind of suit the schedule that you're aiming for. So it could be a strict schedule. Um, it could be allowing you to have time to spend with family. Another thing could be stress. Because burnout is a real thing. A lot of people get burnt out. So is this a, you? maybe you want a low stress environment. Maybe you want to be in a position where 
not a lot of the big calls, the big shots need to be on you. You know, um, it's a lot. It can be challenging for some. Some people don't work in that high stressful, high volume environment. Maybe for you, you think personally at your core, you'll be happier at maybe a store that doesn't push as many pills as another store that pushes a lot of pills and has a drive through and all these things, right? So uh, has like a script. When I say pushing pills, I mean, has a, has a lot of prescriptions per day. So maybe it's like 700 or a thousand versus another store that might only have like 200. Maybe that's what's best for you. Maybe you don't thrive in a high stressful environment, but guess what? Some people that thrive in those high stressful environments, they don't thrive in a low stressful environment. They go insane. <laughs> okay. They can't stand to be in those situations where there's only 200 scripts coming in a day. So you can find your niche. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. So maybe stress is something that you're concerned about. So I'm going to write that, write that down too. So maybe your personal goal is to have a position that, that doesn't stress you out too much. Um, strict schedule, stress. I'm trying to think of different things that I've definitely heard other people, personal goals wise. One that allows you to have a family, right? Pharmacy is, is a profession that's mainly dominated by women. And you know, some colleagues I know want to have children. So a big thing is, you know, how much time can they take for leave? You know, do do they believe they'll be in a position where it'll still be secure? So that opportunity to build a family, you know, so is a personal goal could be building a family. So if you're building a family, then you want to make sure you're at a position or you're at a place that will help you be able to build the family. Because this might be a, a an uncommon train of thought. But I think we need to view our jobs as kind of like a partner. Our jobs are a partner. And you want to make sure your partner, whether you're in a relationship or not, your partner should have your best interest at heart. And so should your job. So if you're only at this place for money, or if you're only at this place because it satisfies a career goal, you will be unhappy. You will be frustrated with your life. So you need to make sure that your partner, your job, satisfies you personally. Okay? So that's something that I made sure to do, and that's something that I think everybody should do. So to basically wrap this up, I said this was going to be short and it's like 30 something minutes right now. So, of course, I went on a rant. Uh, and it's been a while since I did this. So take it easy on me, guys. Take it easy on me. But when you start with your personal goals first, you'll just be happy. Trust me, you'll be happy. If you start with your personal goals first, so if you know you want to be at a place that allows you to build a family, if you know you want to be at a place that has a flexible schedule that um, pays you a certain amount or a place that has a family, these things that you personally care about, then the role within pharmacy that you'll have, you'll enjoy. But if you focus on the career goals first, and that's the only thing you focus on, it's going to be tough. It might be tough for you to be happy. And that's where I personally believe a lot of people, when they get pharmacy a bad rep, it's usually probably pharmacists who just did something for their career goal. They didn't focus on the personal goal aspect. Okay, maybe they wanted to make some money right away. So they did retail, for example. I'm not trying to bully retail or anything, but they did retail. They made some money. But maybe personally, what they wanted was not only money, but also a flexible schedule. Also, maybe a low stress environment. So these are the things I want you all to think about. Are what are the different personal goals that you have? You know, do you want to? And it could be anything. It could be anything. Let's say. 
let's say you want to be able to go to dance class. You want to pick up a new hobby and you want to be able to um, work and then leave work and go learn how to salsa, learn how to bachata, um, you know, learn all these different dances. Maybe you want to learn another language. That's something that's on my bucket list to learn another language. And you want to make sure you have time to do that. Maybe you even want to learn another profession just to do it as a side hobby. Okay, well, when does that other profession take place? Does that other profession take place during the weekdays or during the weekend? Well, if that other profession takes place during the weekdays, then you got to make sure you're in a, in a role or in a position to where you can probably work as a pharmacist five days a week, maybe two days on the weekend, three days during the week, and then you can work the other profession one or two days during the week. Right? So these are the things I want you all to think about. Think about your personal goals. And make sure your career goals align with that. Because if you start with your career goals first, you could be very, very unhappy. So I'm a firm believer of starting with your personal goals first. This is what I want with my life. This is the type of man I want to be. This is the type of woman I want to be. This is the type of person I want to be. These are the things I want to accomplish. And then once you have that kind of laid out, you can look at, all right, which one of these career paths align with it? Because there could be multiple things you're into. Or, hey, maybe this career path starting out aligns with this goal. But when I transition to this part of my life in two to three years, I might need to transition to a different role in pharmacy. And that's okay. You don't have to box yourself in. You can do multiple different positions. I'm currently doing that now. Um, so it's it's okay. right? So that's just something I wanted to mention. Please align your career goals with your personal goals, because when you're not aligned, you will find yourself frustrated, unhappy, and possibly even bitter about the situation you're in. So please, please, please make sure to align your personal goals with your career goals so you can have a successful life, not only in your career, but also in your personal. Thank you, guys. That's all. Didn't really mean a rant, but I did. Uh, But yeah, no editing. Just going to go ahead and post this. Um, Appreciate you all for listening, for always supporting us. If you haven't already, please follow us at new underscore Caps Rx podcast on all platforms. YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Um, I know on YouTube, on YouTube, Check out our YouTube shorts. Sometimes I post some things on there that I haven't posted on Instagram and TikTok. Um, I'm trying to create more content to kind of switch things up so that way you're not going on each social media and you see the same things every single time. So I'm trying to make sure to kind of divvy things up. And um, another thing I want to mention too with this, if you're listening to this episode, this episode will be on YouTube. I am actually recording this from my phone. Um, so you'll also see this episode on YouTube. You can see me. All right. You can see my, my, uh, my pretend studio for now. Okay. We're working on things. And, um, if you want to check it out, please go ahead, go to YouTube, go ahead and check it out. If you're more of a visual watcher, uh, rather than, than an auditory listener, feel free, feel free to go ahead and check us out on YouTube. So Thank you guys for all the love and support. If you like some of the content we've been posting more with like the Finance Fridays, um, anything I've been posting with the YouTube shorts, please let us know. We're trying to co- continue to create more and more and more content to satisfy all of you. And if you disagree with this, let me know. If you, if you disagree that maybe it should be career goals more than your personal goals and, and things like that, let me know. I would love to have that conversation with you because I'm, I'm all about learning and new experiences. And then also, if you are struggling to identify what career you want to explore in pharmacy or um, even outside of pharmacy, if you're struggling to find what career you believe you belong in, like I said, I had a conversation twice in the past week, one with somebody in pharmacy, one somebody who's not in pharmacy, not in healthcare at all. Um, and we were kind of able to brainstorm together and kind of come to terms with what that person believes would be the best career for them and how they should go about uh, partaking in that career. So if there's anything I can do to help, let me know. 
Um, I'm available. Carmen's available. We're always here, here to help you guys. So definitely feel free to reach out to us if you're struggling to figure out your career goals, if you're struggling to figure out your personal goals, the things that matter to you. Feel free. Feel free to reach out to us. Um, but if not, just think about what makes you happy. Things, think about the things you enjoy when the things you're doing that makes you feel like, oh, I don't need to be on social media. Oh, I don't need to do this. Like, I just really, really enjoy doing this. And this makes me happy, like genuine happiness. And those are some of the things that you can use as a guide to help you kind of determine what are the personal goals that you believe in. And if you feel like this episode helped you, please let me know. Please reach out. Um, It was kind of impromptu out of nowhere, kind of just going off of life experience and the different things that have been happening in my life the past couple of weeks. So um, figured, you know, if other people I know are thinking this in pharmacy, outside of pharmacy, then I'm sure a lot of y'all are thinking, especially since uh, a lot of you guys are. Well, actually, I guess everybody probably finished school. So congratulations to you guys. If you just completed um, your fourth year of pharmacy school. Or if you haven't and you're about to, early congrats. Um, it's not easy <laughs> going through it, I know. But I'm super proud of you guys for sticking through with it, um, staying disciplined and accomplishing this goal of yours that you had. So um, that's one chapter closed. And now the next one begins with you working as a pharmacist. So if you need any help with the NAPLEX or the MPJE, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, we have our com slash CAPSRXPodcast for our different services. If you just want some advice, some questions, one-on-one questions, just message me. Comment on anything we post. Message me directly. doesn't really matter. Message the podcast, um, and I'll be sure to get in touch with you. Or if not me, Carmen will. Um, and, and we'll definitely give you the advice that uh, we believe would best help you to accomplish your goals. So thanks again, guys. We appreciate the love and support. It's been an incredible journey. Um, and I can't wait to see how much more we grow throughout the rest of the year.